You might not know this about me, but I'm, I'm a gamer. And as a gamer, I have a certain level of expectations when it comes to my games. One criteria that might fall under the radar of less qualified gamers is the pre-order bonus. The LEGO video game franchising empire is no slouch when it comes to these freebie bonuses. As a matter of fact, there's a sh ton of them. And yes, for those questioning it, me cursing does take my gaming level up an additional notch, making me a cooler gamer. And as a gamer that expects a half-decent pre-order bonus, I'm gonna be honest, I'm quite disappointed with LEGO's newest outing. While that's not true and I actually quite enjoy it, others don't, and there's a very good reason for that. Blue Milk Mustache Luke Skywalker Farm Boy Edition 3.0? Come on, we can do better. And when I said we, I actually had it upside down and I meant me. I. I can do better. After studying what LEGO has given us in the past as freebie bonuses, and after using my very advanced math skills that I definitely do have, I have found the perfect LEGO Star Wars pre-order bonus figure for the upcoming LEGO Star Wars The Skywalker Saga. Other than Yaddle, of course, because they put a lot of emphasis on Yaddle, probably just to show the fact that they are really going very obscure with their character selections for this game. However, it did get some people excited, i.e. me, that we might get a Yaddle minifigure, and this would be a good reason to do it, so I think we should get my girl Yaddle. For those gamers not in the know, a pre-order bonus is just a freebie given out by game companies as an excuse to get you all excited for their up-and-coming game. And when I said freebie, I actually meant you had to pay $5 to get it. When you go to pre-order a game, you have to pay $5 to have the honor of having your name typed in a system so you know that you're getting the newest Call of Duty game day one. At some point, some genius gamer came along and said, let's, let's give those fellow gamers some free car air fresheners when they pre-order the newest Mario Odyssey. And thus, the pre-order bonus is born. You too now can get a Rubik's Cube with your favorite gaming character on it when you go to your nearest target. Oftentimes, these pre-order bonuses can be a physical embodiment of garbage, but other times it might be a digital form of garbage, such as new characters or skins for characters, guns, game modes, or story mission. Lego's form of the pre-order bonus that people most associate with are the free minifigures that you have to pay $5 for. Don't forget the $5. There is a lot of garbage stores wanted to pass out to try to get you to buy the game through them. We are ignoring most of it. I don't care if someone's giving out an X-Wing or a Tumblr with your purchase, doesn't matter to me. We are solely focusing, with a few exceptions, on the minifigures. We're gonna ignore all the bag tags, all of the Star Wars trading cards, and yes, the Harry Potter scarf. It's it's going out the window. That leaves us with 24 examples we can use to find our perfect minifigure. 2010 was the starting point when we would see a minifigure be a pre-order bonus as a reoccurring thing for the next decade. It all started with LEGO Universe's Nexus Astronaut. Who the hell is this and why should you care? No one, and you shouldn't care because really our first pre-order bonus was a bunch of keychains. Just like the house crust magnets, we're gonna ignore these two. Yes, we do have to care about this minifigure after all. Outside of that, not a lot to pay attention to until we hit 2011 with Captain Jack Sparrow or the voodoo doll version of him. There's one other key identity we can see in pre-order bonus figures to find our perfect one, and that is its exclusiveness. We saw the same thing with Lex Luthor the following year, where it was an exclusive version of him. There was already a Lex Luthor at the time, but this was a power armor variant. Another important aspect we should take from this poly bag is that it has some terrain in it. It just takes the form of three two by fours, but it's something to work with. Elrond came out the same year and it offered a very unique thing at the time. Like I mentioned before, there are pre-order bonuses that add digital in-game content. Elrond did the same thing. You not only got a minifigure, put a code to play as this figure in the game. Our perfect pre-order bonus, we will add a code so you can play as the character. In the next few years, we really didn't see anything too revolutionary. We saw some new versions of figures or just outright new characters we have never seen in minifigure form. This timeline of mediocrity would change, however, in 2015 with Jurassic World, where we would receive two exclusive polybags meant solely as a pre-order bonus for a video game. Dr. Wu doesn't offer anything too special other than the confirmation that we really should have an accessory with our minifigure. The dinosaur trap, however, does. In this set, we've not only received an exclusive printed tile, but a unique dinosaur. While this is an interesting oddity, I think the only thing we can really take away from this is about how big our build in the set can be. Up until our most recent pre-order bonus, we've had some pretty solid examples of what we can work with other than Kendo Lloyd. That's a piece of filth. I'm I'm starting to feel bad for Ninjago fans. With LEGO Movie 2 being the most recent video game to release, Starstruck Emmett is 
Interesting. It does have an exclusive 2x2 printed tile in the form of the face for the Star Kid, which does work with the Jurassic World poly bag with another exclusive print, meaning we could probably put one in our own poly bag. Lastly, in our list, I'd like to pay attention to some oddities. These are not video game pre order bonuses. However, they kind of work as one. Before LEGO got into their licenses, they did a lot of games that were their own IPs. With LEGO Island, we have the Infomaniac, which is an exclusive original character from the game bundled in as an exclusive real-world minifigure. LEGO Loco, a train simulator, we got two exclusive minifigures and a build in the set. Probably shouldn't put two minifigures in our perfect ideal poly bag because it's something LEGO probably would never do. In LEGO Chess, we got an exclusive king with a little throne build, and with LEGO Creator, we got a little biker with an exclusive face print on a bike. To pick our perfect character, I can just arbitrarily pick different things that I like. Sure, I want a new version of Yoda, but who the hell other than me wants an 18th different version of Yoda? Probably a few of you, but you're all sickos. Instead, I use different variables from the Star Wars canon to find out what our real perfect minifigure could possibly be. Popularity and character. What trilogy a character is most associated with. Has this character come in minifigure form? We should look at how much this character actually has to do in the franchise. How many voice lines does the character have? One last major thing we should take into consideration is name value. Everybody knows there's different perceived values on different brands and how strong that name is. Skywalker, that's a strong name. Super made up, kind of dumb, but everybody knows it. Similar with things like Palpatine or Kenobi. Down on the list, we have something like Trench. Who the hell cares about Admiral Trench? Too many people. So after plugging in all the things like how many voice lines a character has, whether or not they appeared, what trilogy, we get your answer. And no, it's not Yaddle. It should have been Yaddle. They put so much emphasis after plugging in way too many characters into this list. I came to my top five conclusion or top four, depending on how anal you want to be. At number five, we have the Rebellion Hero Nine Nub or Vagina Cheeks. It's surprising that Nine Nub hasn't been made into a character yet, especially since the much less seen and much less common character, Tin Nub, has been made into a character. <laughs> Why Tin Nub twice over Nine Nub once? I'm not quite sure. However, due to the fact that he is an original trilogy character and he even had an appearance in the sequel trilogies, I'm sure LEGO will make him in a normal set at some point, so it probably shouldn't be put behind a $65 plus dollar paywall. At number four, or three again if you're anal, we have Baru Lars! This is, and not in the inbred way, Luke Skywalker's adopted mother slash aunt. There are very few characters that do speak in A New Hope that haven't been made, but she seems like one of the more poignant ones that probably should have an appearance. She's pretty easy to make, you just do part of Lars' homestead and then give her some blue milk and she's good to go. That could be her alternative face, she has a little blue milk, 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 milk. that's adorable! But something that holds her back is her name convention. Skywalker, strong, powerful, Grr. Lars, I mean, that's a name you would get bullied for having. If we go back up to that Skywalker name, we get our second choice character, Shami. Anakin Skywalker's mother is essentially the Virgin Mary seen since Anakin Skywalker is Star Wars Space Jesus. Even though the character's premise in the movies is pretty lackluster with only a few speaking lines in episode one and two, her position in the overall story is phenomenally huge. She raised Anakin Skywalker. The Skywalkers are the same family that screwed up the entire universe for generations. While I would understand they wouldn't necessarily want to do the episode two version where she was brutally beaten a slave, it would make a little bit more sense to do the episode one version where she was brutally beat and a, and a slave. They made Rey Skywalker a minifigure. They can make Shami Skywalker. Besides, she has like one item in canon that Watto gave her, so you could give her like a little tool piece to represent that and have like a, her, her workbench with like three CPO around or maybe the table she serves everybody at. Finally, at our number one choice or potentially number one and two choice if you want to split it up, is the creator of Star Wars himself, George Lucas, or his character, the, 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 the blue one. In my eyes, George Lucas makes more sense overall because people actually know what that is. Uh, over Bear and Papanata, there could not be any more poetic justice than having him as the minifigure for the Skywalker saga. It's like poetry, it rhymes. In terms of the code for the character in the game, it would work a lot better than you might think. He could get the Stan Lee treatment that they gave him in the Marvel games. He had Wolverine skeletons, swing around like Spider-Man, turn into the Hulk. He was pretty cool. We could have the same thing with George Lucas. He could just be a godlike character that has all of the abilities. He could be a dark side user, a light side user, a bounty hunter, access droid panels, all of it. In terms of the physical product, that would also be easy. You could have any sort of uh, director's chair or a camera rig, or he could just have any number of props behind him. We can even integrate the thing that they used in the original figure here and make that the exclusive 2x2 printed tile. I would say Lucas works out 
up pretty great. Baron Pepperoni, however, is a little bit harder of a workaround. Outside of his appearance in The Clone Wars, you only see him once in one movie, and that's episode three. He doesn't have any speaking roles, and you only see him for a split second. However, it's still George Lucas as a Star Wars character, which I think would make a lot more sense thematically. And it's still George Lucas, so if you wanted to make him an overpowered god in the game and give him all the abilities like the George Lucas character I was just talking about, you could do that, or you can just make him like any other senator, which would also work. In terms of the physical aspect, it gets a little bit more tricky. In this scenario, he'd probably just have a walking stick as an accessory and probably a brick-built chair that looks similar to the ones Anakin and Palpatine sat in. There you have it, an expert gamer's opinion on what the perfect minifigure mathematically for Lego Star Wars The Skywalker Saga should be. It should be Yaddle, damn it!